Hey everyone, Rob here, and we've got some updates on the earthquake and potential eruption situation going on in Iceland. Now, this has been going on for, what is it, just about a month or so now? Um, longer if you count, you know, the land rise and the deformation and things like that that's been going on in the area. But I thought I would start today's video with a little bit of background because maybe not everyone realizes exactly what's going on in Iceland and why there's so many volcanoes and so many earthquakes. What we're looking at here is a map of all the volcano or volcanic regions in Iceland. You can see these red lines, uh, these ones here going sort of throughout the whole country. These are the basically volcano belts, as they call them. And that's where eruptions can occur basically at any point of those, of those areas. Now, if we dive in even further... We can see, well, let's just jump here first. We can see the Reykjanes Peninsula area, and you can see they have named the various areas. We know Fagrasfell, and that's from the eruption that has occurred three times already in this area. We, of course, have Reykjanes. The airport is here on the peninsula area, which is just kind of outside this area, but not in, in sort of this carefree zone. Uh, of course, we have Krusevik, which is another big reason. And the Krusevik reason goes up towards the capital area. So if we go in even further, we can see these are some of the names of the cities and areas in the capital Reykjavik area. Um, this big blue area is, of course, Reykjavik. And then we have areas such as Nordingdeholt. We have Mosso, which is up here at the top. Uh, Hapnafjord, which is sort of towards the bottom. And the aluminum spelt smelter is here and sort of the... The, the edge of the capital area and that's these little lines here showing that again the capital area is not uh, immune to potential dangers in the future when you look at uh, volcanic activity. Hapnafjord, if you've ever come to Iceland and you're driving up to Hapnafjord, you know that there is a huge amount of lava fields and lava all surrounding Hapnafjord up to a certain point and then it kind of slowly dies down as you get closer to Reykjavik through Garðabær and so forth. And that's because of the history that of, you know, Iceland having a ton of eruptions. I mean, if you just look at this map here, you can see that they're everywhere. You have these massive ones down in the south, Hekla and Katla. And these are the ones that people are pretty concerned about because if these ones go, they're going to be big ones. And then, of course, ones that are a little bit further away from, from people... Um, you know, Grimsvat, which I've talked to Askia, these are more inside of the country. So it's a little bit less of a concern in terms of, um, you know, interacting with people's daily lives. I mean, this is something that could produce a lot of ash just because of the glacier that's around this area. But not many people uh, are living sort of around this area when you're taking a look and comparing it to the Reykjanes Peninsula. So that's just a little bit of a background on this. Now, what came out on the news today is the Blue Lagoon is now extending their closure um, for a couple more days. And the reason is, is really comes down to <laughs> the roads are still closed. Um, and you can see here, this is the Reykjanes Peninsula. We zoom in. The Blue Lagoon is this blue dot here. We can see these red lines are all closed roads. And if I hover over, it says driving prohibited. So that's a big reason why I believe the Blue Lagoon is still closed because they were set to open, I believe on the 7th, which is in two days. And now they are going to be opening uh, on December 9th. Not sure if they've talked to the civil protection about this, but they, uh, they said that they're going to be doing that. And then the hotel area, uh, Silica Hotel and Retreat Hotel, they're going to keep that closed for a little bit longer until the 12th of December. And that is probably because they don't want any bookings and people coming and then civil protection kicks them out again. Uh, not the best at all. So we can see here that uh, there's really no more notice. We have a little thing at the top here saying it's temporarily closed. And then we have uh, the information here saying that it's going to be open December 9th. Um, I mean, they say the, the situation will be reassessed, but as of right now, they're saying that 7 a.m. December 9th, they will open unless stated otherwise, um, which I mean, it's the fifth now. So I'm guessing that they're going to, I don't know, take two more days and, and then on the seventh, they'll figure it out because uh, the, what the last thing they want is, you know, Friday night on the eighth them to say that they're not actually going to open. I think uh, people want to make sure 
that the bookings that they have, they can go to the Blue Lagoon. So, yeah, again, roads are closed. So I believe that is a big uh, factor when it comes to the Blue Lagoon opening up uh, because people get there. Now, speaking of the Blue Lagoon, we have information coming from Ambiet and we have uh, Vidir here and he's the director of public safety uh, for the National Police. You know, he's had a couple of jobs, uh, you know, politician kind of stuff. Now, in an interview, he said the wall that they're building, and we've seen this many times before, uh, this fortified wall that they're building to sort of protect the power plant and the Blue Lagoon from the eruption, should it occur, uh, this will not affect visitors from accessing the Blue Lagoon. And he's, he's reassuring everyone that, don't worry, uh, everyone's thought of how can people get in and out of the Blue Lagoon. I mean, you look at this picture here, we have a, a parking lot to the left and the Blue Lagoon on the right with this giant fortress around it. And they are going to come up with some way to, yeah, working with an architect and a technician on behalf of the Blue Lagoon to work on the design of the defense wall around the parking lot uh, and making sure that the public can access that. So, um, again, don't worry if you're going to the Blue Lagoon. It's probably going to be just some sort of little tunnel that should there be an eruption, they can just seal it off pretty quickly uh, or something like that. Not exactly sure what their whole plan is, but there you go. Uh, we have this man here who is uh, Thorvaldur. Now, he's saying that if the land rise in the Reykjanes Peninsula continues at the same rate as it is now, this is very clear something's going to happen. Now, he's the professor, uh, Thorvald Thorson, professor of volcanology at the University of Iceland. And he says that, of course, this can lead to an eruption or magma intrusion, even at lower depths. And there would be some earthquakes with that. I mean, we saw earthquakes in November that were pretty intense. And that's why Grindavik is still evacuated. He says it's unlikely that it's going to be directly under Grindavik. And it's sort of moved closer towards the Blue Lagoon, where it initially was. And he says that uh, he doubts the sequence of events on the you know night of November 10th when it was just massive earthquakes hitting Blue Lagoon, or hitting the Grindavik area. He doesn't think that those are going to repeat itself, but he says that there is still a cause for concern. Some people have taken this height into account when estimating larger earthquakes uh, and how that could be sort of felt, but of course not the same activity that he's uh, saying are going to occur uh with this land rise but he thinks something will happen i mean we were following the news previously talking about this land rise since i think it was august since the sort of towards the end of the last eruption and this land rise kept continuing and continuing until something happened and then it was in november that we had all of the earthquakes and now we are seeing it happen again the land rise is back at the level it was in november and is continuing to rise, so it's basically anyone's guess. I mean, it can't rise forever. Uh, something is probably going to give, but uh, if not, then maybe it'll just be a new mountain. So looking at this map here, we can see uh, the earthquakes that have occurred in the Reykjanes Peninsula in the last 48 hours, and you can see on the chart here down at the bottom, most of them are relatively small, hovering around a magnitude of 1. We do see a couple that sort of creep up getting close to a magnitude of 3, but if it was a magnitude of three, we would have a green star on the map. It's good news that there is a decrease in these earthquakes. But again, who knows how uh, how it's going to look? As I said, the land at Svart, you know, the Svartsengi sort of area has now risen higher than it was before the earthquake series began on October 25th. Uh, so who knows what's going to be happening? They do say that magma is still flowing into it. The uh, meteorological office here says that you know seismic activity is continuing to decrease as we're seeing based on you know since the sort of height of it on November 10th, and there are much fewer and smaller earthquakes than in recent weeks, and most earthquakes are measuring below one in magnitude as we're seeing here. If we take a look at the table, sorry, it's all in Icelandic. I just forgot to switch it over, um, but we can see here the chart here. So so 118 um, of of basically one or lower. And then 1 to 2 is 44, 2 to 3 is 4, and then 9. So it's 166 in the last 48 hours. Now, despite less activity at the magma tunnel in this sort of immediate area, the meteorological uh, agency here does say that the land rise remains pretty stable and constant. You know, it is still going up. 
Um, now everything peaked November 10th when you know this big magma tunnel formed. It's not over, but it can be said with some certainty uh, that a new chapter has begun where the same sequence of events can repeat itself. So this is coming from the meteorological uh, agency here in Iceland, which they're saying that it's possible that all this stuff can happen again. And then we have the professor of volcanology uh, doubting that it will be kind of a similar thing. It's difficult to say when this next event is going to occur and whether it's going to occur in a similar way. And of course, we have the meteorological uh, agency here, Verusofa Eastlands, constantly keeping an eye on what's going on. And we can see here, if we just click here, we can see all of the news um, and information that they have here. So they, they've got a lot of really smart people working on this. Again, we've got danger zones, land rise, all of this is on this website which uh, of course i reference this to get the information to present to you guys so that's pretty much it that's all the news that we got going on you know again tons of earthquakes going on uh sorry not tons of earthquakes tons of volcanic regions in iceland of course and uh you can see here this is a photo that i found from ruve one of the photographers there took it in grindavik showing quite the amount of uh of damage and destruction that's going to be happening or that has happened in this town. Some of these holes in Grindavik are more than 25 meters deep, I'm told, and I'm reading. Um, access is still a little bit iffy into the town, and there's good reason for that because of, you know, you see pictures like this. So um, here's hoping that everything settles down, that the people of Grindavik can go back to their homes in time for Christmas, which is, uh, again, towards the end of the month, and they can enjoy the holidays in homes rather than in you know rental units or something like that so that's everything thank you so much for watching i'll be sure to keep you updated if any changes occur